Hillary, we are in for a very fun episode. I'm very, very excited. This is a St. Helena, like, local hero. I would agree. Usually I'm kind of negative Nancy on everything, but when we're with a star at this level, like, you can't be negative. No. No, and just a genuine human all around. Great and human. so I think this is going to be for an awesome episode. Great family, great human. Uh, I think everyone's going to enjoy it. So stay tuned. Cheers. Hi, everybody. Hello, Hillary. Are you so excited? I am always excited. Well, I like this enthusiasm. This is a new like, treat for you. It's Christmas time, so I'm trying to be much more... Enthusiastic. Well, this is actually going to be our Valentine's Day episode. Oh, okay. Well, that's sweet then, isn't it? We're sprinkling Cupid and love in the air. That's great. And I'd like to point out, this is still Napa County's, Napa Valley's cheapest running podcast. I bet it's Napa County, too. I think we could could expand to the whole county. All the way. Probably even throw Vallejo in there. Solano, maybe? Yeah. We could maybe expand to surrounding counties. I'm I'm willing to bet. Indeed. Uh, Low production costs, high authenticity. Probably about twelve dollars a month to run this, which you pay for. So thank you. <laughs> and it's my donation to the cause. Well, but um, speaking of high authenticity, we have a super cool guest tonight. We really do, and <laughs> some fantastic wine that we're drinking. We do. Um, so we have arguably like a Saint Helena legend, a local hero, and like a national name too. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Chili Bowl champion, yep. race car driving. And just overall cool person. Absolutely. Do you want to introduce who we're sure. here tonight? Sure. Welcome to uh, Rico Abreu. Woo! Uh, yeah. Thank he's, you guys. Uh, <laughs> first in the racing world, but second Abreu to be on the podcast. So I hope you're okay with being second to Mateo. <laughs> That's not, not a bad person to be second to. <laughs> thank uh, you guys for having me on. Thank yeah. you. And uh, before we even get started, I want to thank Rico for bringing a, his birth year, 1992 Stony Hill Chardonnay that we're drinking. Uh, I'll let you talk about this a little bit because this is really cool. So I was thinking all day on what to drink um, tonight while we're discussing life and past and present and future. And uh, and it really hit me that, you know, that just with all the craziness going on in this world and appreciation for people, Mike Collini's Stony Hill um, Chardonnay. 1992, so we're drinking a 31-year-old Chardonnay that tastes amazing and smells amazing, and, um, you know, just really bring back some childhood memories for Hillary and I, um, you know, with how close we were to the, are to the Kalinis, uh, and I just thought it would be fun to, to tell a few stories, and, um, yeah, it's just, you know, and, and again, thank you guys for having me on, this is, this is pretty cool what you guys do, and, I've grown as a as a person um, and matured in life. Being 31 years old, being away from the Napa Valley as a race car driver, and just understanding um, logistics of the wine industry and what goes on behind the scenes here. So it's really cool to kind of see you guys get out and about and um, get to talk to people that don't necessarily, you know, get in front of the public. So this is uh, this is really fun to to do that's nice. one of the best introductions we've wow. ever had yeah. <laughs> can we hire you as our spokesperson yeah. <laughs> our new producer i think um yeah back to the cleaning family i think this is such a cool tribute too for mikey um because we you guys just hosted a celebration of life and it it was such like a, a saint Helena event like so many faces there you know just from growing up here and it, it's just as sad as it was it was like a warm magical feeling if that makes sense mm-hmm Nice. And he certainly made a beautiful, age-worthy wine, and this is, I mean, just incredible. The glass, man, the color's great. It's like, car- like you said, caramel, which is, I completely agree, and it's just still got a lot of youthful and freshness in there. It smells it's like really, a late harvest. It kind of does, yeah. But it's not sweet at all. No, no. Yeah. Neat. Wow. So anyway, cheers to Mike. I didn't know Mike very well, but... Um, we all appreciate what he did for the Valley. It's Tony Hill. Absolutely. And uh, a cheers to Mike, right? Cheers. Cheers, cool. yay. <coughs> well, jumping in tonight, we're going to do July 2023, and then we have July 2007 in honor of your first professional race. Okay. So, right. Shall we jump into one? Yeah. I've got a fun one. Let's I'm just going to go right out of the bat. 2007. July 12th at 2.30 in the afternoon. 
A Sulphur Springs resident reported that her neighbor's uncaged rabbits were destroying her yard and eating her plants. She tried to contact the neighbor, but there was a language barrier. Police contacted the neighbor. <laughs> Those scandalous rabbits. Scandalous rabbits. Got it. I hope it all worked out okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have one that's a little more scary than rabbits. Report of a prowler jumping a fence and knocking over someone's window. Knocking on someone's window on Bella Vista. Police detained a 31-year-old on suspicious of public intoxication. Wow, that's wild. I think he just thought it was his house, and maybe it wasn't. Well, if he would have gone to the Sulphur Springs house, he, he would have been detained by the attack rabbits. So, I guess. <laughs> God, I guess maybe. He could have had a late-night salad. <laughs> are we? Um, are you on 2007? Or are we? I, to, I have 2023, but you can jump around. Any direction. There are no rules of this podcast. I... Um, as, are, as are our listeners. Very intriguing. On uh, July 2000, uh, 2023, mm-hmm. I want to say it was, what, 6131 or 1631? Would that be? Four, four. Oh, 430. 430 yep. in the afternoon, a man asked for help finding his wife <laughs> who'd gone out for a cup of coffee <laughs> or of a cup or co- a cup of coffee that was late getting back. <laughs> so now we're checking in on our loved ones through the police department <laughs> to see where people are at. They they have um people have I guess asked my friends now, right? Find my friends. I was just gonna say I think this is a couple that needs to share that little Yeah, yeah probably. She probably just it swaps fixes a lot of problems. <laughs> she moved from coffee or to... causes a lot of yeah, problems. That too. <laughs> Moved from coffee to wine and just didn't come home. Good for her. But the girls. So, Rico, oh. be going into, like, the professional racing realm. Because I know you from growing up, like, riding everything that had a motor. And, like, always thinking of you as, like, the fearless person. How did you decide to transition that into, like, a professional? Once. So, once I got um, through high school and really found my place in motorsports, you know, I've always had um, such a fascinating you know, idea or wanting to be that fearless guy, the center of attention when it came to, you know, being wild. And, and you see, obviously, it runs in our blood of <laughs> family members. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, the goat carts is really where I started 2007, 2008, and finding that place for me where I was comfortable and the same skill level on the racetrack where I wasn't you know, stunted in any way of uh, just learning the craft of racing and um, the physics of racing and being out on the track. Um, I felt like we all had, you know, the same opportunity to, to be successful. So um, I really put a big effort into it. And uh, it's, you know, 12 years down the road here, really found my place in, in motorsports of sprint car racing. And I've got the opportunity to drive all sorts of different race cars, which has helped me um, you know, of the, the growth of my career and getting to race in front of all different fans um, across the country. And it's, uh, you know, I get a little bit of FOMO being away from home from the Napa Valley here as I've gotten older and you understand and appreciate mm-hmm. what's here and what my family's developed in the wine industry. And uh, so I, I feel like my window is getting tighter and tighter as my career goes here in racing to want to come back to be a part of, you know, especially um, Mateo and his growth here and, and his education in the wine industry and, and my father. And I think it's really important to be around people like that. And, um, you know, there there's still, you know, goals I have in racing. You know, I, I still want to win a crown jewel race. So we, we haven't done and, and a crown jewel race is in like one of the major races. Um, mm-hmm you know, that, that our industry has, and, and there's, there's three or four of them. And I would like to, to put a team together to, to be successful enough to do that. And we have, we have a tight niche though. So I have, um, you know, four full-time employees and and my fiance, Megan and I sell lots of merchandise at the races. So I've, I've built this amazing fan base, um, in the last decade that, uh, and, and we, we, over a lot of it over is success in racing winning races and then um you know marketing through social media platforms i take that pretty seriously and making allowing the fans to feel 
really appreciative and connected to me. So I've opened up a lot um, about my life and personal life and what I do. And I really have been honestly closed about, I've had, I haven't opened up much about what my family does here because I just didn't feel that the racing world really would appreciate. Um, but they, but as I've understood, they do, they really do appreciate the wine industry. And you've got Gus, who's also a, who's a more of a celebrity than marketer. all of us combined. Uh, yeah, Gus is, uh, you know, Gus has really changed, I think, my vision on life, too, of, like, yep. happiness, of, like, I don't feel like I'm, you know, I just I just felt like I, I had to be a really, really good race car driver, and when I didn't feel like I was, mm-hmm. like, Gus was kind of the barrier for that nice. i mean and, and as i've gotten older i've changed too and mature you mature a lot when you get older and you're around good people and mm-hmm. so take us through some of the um platforms that you've driven right so you started in go-karts and then sprints and yeah then... and then went to stock cars mm-hmm. um you know non-wing sprint cars went to stock cars did some uh arca races it's like a lower tier series of nascar okay. and then did Was that with the truck uh and, and you did the, did the truck series yeah. for a full season <clears throat> And I just, uh, I never really did anything special, and I it was hard to put sponsorship packages mm-hmm. together to, it was a, quite a bit more expensive than sprint car racing, yeah. and I just, the lifestyle wasn't really fit for me, you yeah. know, I just feel like we grew up kind of blue collar farm boys, like where we just, yeah. we didn't live the bougie lifestyles, mm-hmm. and that was, I felt like that's the direction nice. NASCAR is kind of going, mm-hmm. and I just wasn't for us. And I didn't need to, like, I didn't, wasn't intrigued about being on TV every weekend because I physically looked different and I wasn't a good driver. So I just didn't fit the mold for, I wanted to be a good driver yeah. and I just wasn't at that caliber. And you found that in sprint cars. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Cool. And I just, it feels like home, you know, yeah. we just travel to the races and with the three gentlemen that work on my car and Megan and I, and we all get along and it's nice. like a, it runs a business. Now. And you're on the road like six months uh, a year? Yeah, it's like. 30,000 miles in from what February to November it's holy moly yeah. wow and you have a, the trailer and you just roll so the the boys are in like a 45 foot hauler mm-hmm. cargo hauler and then uh, Megan and I have a 30 foot merchant vending trailer nice. and so what we usually travel mm-hmm. together and we all stay we just get two hotel rooms and we didn't go the motorhome route because hotel rooms are easy to pump and dump yeah. and <laughs> get on to the next one so exactly I mean, it's it's a definitely a, a tough lifestyle, and it's a lifestyle I don't want to live my whole life. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's really important to me that I am here and I'm all I'm 100 percent committed to racing mm-hmm. and and committed to uh, conquering you know those crown jewel wins yeah. and um, financially funding the team without my family's support. Almost, with my father's been so generous over all these years to help me follow my career, but now I feel like I've gotten it to a business level where it could um, perform without his funding, mm-hmm. which he's very passionate about his children. And um, so that's fun for him to do. Uh, but I, my goal is to get it to fund it, to be a bit legit yeah. business and it not just be a, you know, a write off for a, a wealthy person. Mm-hmm. Like it is in some form of the industry. Mm-hmm. For sure. So mm-hmm. it, it takes just time to structure all that and mm-hmm. sponsorships and, Smart yeah, so marketing. how does the sponsorship work? You're, who are you sponsored by now? We'll, yes. we'll give them a shout out. So yeah, just, I have a few. Why did they listen to podcasts? I have a, uh, actually a tequila company. <laughs> no way. Yeah, that's, that's from Bloomington, Illinois that um, has really smooth tequila. It's called El Bandito Yankee yeah. Tequila. And they actually are in, I'm pretty sure they're in like a, a lawsuit battle with uh, <laughs> uh, Chinchero because somebody owns a, teque- or a brand called The Bandit. That oh, owns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And they're like putting a uh, trademark. Like, it's like, yeah, they trademark called me. And was like, do you know these Chinchero guys? <laughs> 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 Never heard of them. Do <laughs> yeah. you think you like can help us out? Name. Like, you don't want to get a conflict here. That's incredible. Yeah, so it was actually, it's fine. I mean, they're, they'll are they sort it out however mm-hmm. they want. But it was interesting that, like, you're understanding trademarks and, yeah. like, a wine an old wine brand that joel got used to own that chinchero owns now and mm-hmm. this tequila company that's called el bandito yankee tequila and their model is like it's smo- so smooth it's criminal and they're like in a trademark <laughs> awesome. battle with 
with a wine with yeah chinchero. That's funny. Like I was like, how 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 does that? But it's That's like so they're scary. really protective yeah. over brands and for sure. Wine doesn't have anything to do with no. tequila, mm-hmm. but it's just interesting. So you got the tequila. What else? Uh, so Missoula Valley Transportation, which is a trucking right. company nice. that um, helps us out with like our fueling for our. Mm-hmm. So we um, do a partnership there, and they have branding on my car. And mm-hmm. uh, Royal, his name's Royal Jones. He's from uh, New Mexico, and he actually is just a really big race fan, and nice. he owns a racetrack and um, that we compete at once a year, and he races himself and. And then uh, Curb Records mm-hmm. is another one oh, of our partners. Yeah. So it's a recording. They like manage recording artists and nice. stuff in the Nashville area. And so we should expect a call from big them race fans. Podcast. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably sure. wouldn't. Be, <laughs> probably wouldn't be interested yeah. at all. No, they would be very interested. <laughs> I would not be surprised. <laughs> uh, and, and then there was a like a, a drink too. What was the drink? Yeah, uh, so it was Rowdy Energy, yes. but I no longer have. Um, you know, no longer in my. Nope. R.I.P. Tune with them. Yeah, (laughs) R.I.P. We're moving on. (laughs) And uh, Whiskey Myers. Wait, really? Yes, swear to God. Yeah. That's the coolest one. So they did a... Yeah, (laughs) they are an amazing sponsor. And uh, I've been to two concerts now. I took Mateo in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mateo and Trevor. And they drank Budweiser's all the way down there and were way too drunk when we got there. (laughs) And we got to meet the whole band. It's four... or There's six of them that play on stage and then it's four... Yeah. They're an independent band, so they kind of run their own nice. little program. They're really good. I love really them all good. Time. Yeah, so they were in Yellowstone, which mm-hmm. kind of put them on the map. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's yeah. really good song. It's called Stones, and uh, "Bury My Bones" is my other song that like I really feel like I hit home at. Which cool. is they're just uh, down to earth dudes, and I just went and seen them uh, on Saturday in Fort Wayne, Indiana, nice. which was really fun. And one of the band members is like a huge race fan. And cool. like they want to market themselves in the racing industry, nice. and so they did a partnership with us, and we did a collab on a T-shirt last year, and mm-hmm. sold a bunch of them, and yeah. they sold some on their site, and we sold some on our site, and we sold them at the races, and that's brilliant marketing. It's very cool. Yeah, the it's race world smart. is is huge. You know, there's so many people that follow it religiously. Yeah, I it's was at army in, training into that niche. Yeah, let me tell you a quick story. I was at army training in Kansas, and my buddy who was sitting right next to me, Matt, was like, oh, you're from Napa? Like, do you know Enrico Abreu? And I was like, yeah, of course I know Enrico. And he's like, oh, wait, I'm such a fan. I mean, can, let's take a, can we send him a selfie? And I was like, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Send him a selfie. And he was so charged up. Um, Thank you. That's perfect. But yeah, like you pick with his name in the racing industry, so. And it's been Great. fun to, to kind of see that circle back to mm-hmm. either the wine industry or Navy, mm-hmm. Navy. Army. Or, yeah, yeah. Army, Army Navy. Yeah. 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 And, you just see how like powerful it can be, and mm-hmm. especially social media nowadays yep. too. And yeah, I've really put in an effort to build up my own kind of brand, and nice. um, you know, with Gus and Megan and I, and Megan just helps me keep everything in line. <laughs> I mean, keep it Gus PC. And I, yeah, <laughs> Gus and I were, you know, everybody loves to come see Gus, which yeah. has been cool to see. I think. It's really important nowadays to like set a positive impression to people, especially mm-hmm. kids and stuff. And like Gus has changed a lot of that for us in that direction of like vision of where we're gonna go, where yeah. we want to go with this whole thing, and making people feel comfortable, especially coming up to me. I think mm-hmm. it's when you people feel like you're famous and they have they struggle like mm-hmm. start striking conversation. Gus is a good barrier for mm-hmm. us to they come see Gus and then have and then it's easier to which. I, I feel like I've I've been like that with certain people, mm-hmm. like where I didn't want to like I didn't want to intrude or. But I think it's important for like the race fans to know like that that's that's like what why I enjoy showing up to the races with yeah, them like, is the people and and they're spending their hard earned money to come watch us do something like we love to do, which mm-hmm. is I think really important for people yeah. to know like they're literally spending their paycheck with their family to come watch us race like sure. a midwestern family like the lifestyle is so different than i i honestly think the parallel between winemaking and racing really is is that right like people spending their money on something they enjoy and they want to have like a connection with exactly regardless if it's and racing or wine the story like, and they have a good story about it yeah <laughs> and i think that so when you do come back here you're going to be set like you've got people skills you've got the the abilities and like, it's going to be great wine. <laughs> yeah, you can sell I'll, it. I'll just go make it. Sell you sell it. it. Yeah, I, I, I've learned how to yeah. sell things. That's Which you can do all of the like design. Yeah, yeah. 
the opposite of selling. You do also some like inspirational speaking, right? Yeah, I have. Motivating I just speaking, went to the right? RLS. I went to the RLS in February. That was fun. That was something new to me. Hmm. Uh, I was super nervous to go and like just because. But the kids were actually. I really. I learned. I picked up on it really quickly. The kids were like super intrigued mm-hmm. of like knowing that I went to school there. Mm-hmm. I'm like this race car driver that's yeah. grew up here and. I figured like I wouldn't have their undivided attention, but like we went, it was like 45 minutes and it was gone like that. And I just based it, I built a PowerPoint of like, I started at like where I started in racing and, and like I started like Mm -hmm. where I started when I was younger and showed a picture of me wrestling at RLS and Mm -hmm. like, and and I think the biggest thing was to show kids that there's things out there to go do. Like mm. Mr. Paul's, I see him at the hell spa all the time, and he's like, these kids just sit on their phones. And and I think it was really important to tell, like, to show the kids like that. No matter like how you feel about yourself, like there's something out there for you, like mm-hmm. that you really enjoy doing, and you'll find the niche. Like mm-hmm. and to just, I think appreciate what it, we have here, especially mm-hmm. living in the Napa Valley mm-hmm. and. No matter your circumstance, I think we're all There's super opportunity lucky. and oh, ma- massive well, and two, opportunity. Well, it's, it's a, not the traditional route. You know, it's not like you're going to school, then grad school, then this. Like, it's an incredible career that's a whole other avenue, which I think is super cool. Yeah, it it's it, and it was it was fun to just. I felt way better when I left, like than when I went in, because yep. I just was uncertain, and now I feel like I could go speak now anywhere but cool. it's it's about having a plan when you go into mm-hmm. these things i struggle like off the fly with, did they give you any good questions were there like, uh, any good, they, like they ran tight on questions because yeah. school was almost out but a lot of the questions were like when i first started driving because they're all about to get their permits oh, yeah. and, <laughs> you know and like what it was like mr paul's being my teacher <laughs> and then, and then I and then I was like, yeah, got to take a lap, <laughs> and because that's what Mr. Paul's <laughs> always said when you were in trouble, and <laughs> take a lap. And I, and I told them too, like to appreciate like the the teachers that are like putting up with them every day. Like I think that's a big deal. Sure. Like, mm-hmm. and respect. Like you respect people, you're gonna get respect back. And it was just really li- little things. Like yeah. mm-hmm. like it's like not you know I didn't need to go in there and. Write the encyclopedia for them, and cool. you know, it's just it was like fun. reminders. Yeah. yeah, I do, and they'll listen to you because and you're seen like, from like a a, they, a professional, like yeah. someone that's mm-hmm. and you're closer to like cool for a living, probably closer than most teachers to their age. So you you know under they understand they're a little like identify with you probably a little yeah. Better. I just told them to appreciate these times because when you're got when they're gone, you're gonna think back and be like, wow, I wish I would have you know treated this person better or yeah. I miss high school. Like I miss mm-hmm. high school. I miss being here, mm-hmm. and I'm gone like yeah. all the time. And for sure, I miss the people because there's a lot of good people around here. Nice. And we're all super lucky to like be associated with some good people. Yeah. Absolutely agreed. Cool. Well, I have a fun log. Let's hear it. A Kearney Street resident heard chewing or a digging noise under the house, possibly from a critter. The matter was referred to the county trapper. <laughs> So, did you know there was a county trapper? I did. Yes. And the reason I knew this is because once someone had to call it for a raccoon. And I go to college and I'm like, there's a raccoon. I'm like, we'll just call the county trapper. And in Idaho, they're looking at me like, excuse me? Idaho doesn't like, have a county trapper. Everyone's a trapper. I yes, don't know. exactly. I got the exact. <laughs> they're like, what did you, did you grow up in some bougie place? I was like, bougie place? I feel like it's the opposite of bougie if I have a county trapper. But <laughs> no, We do. Uh, here's a good one. <clears throat> July 16th, this is 2007, uh, 11 in the morning, reported a suspicious young man who refused to provide identification when he tried to buy a drink near Maine and Spring. Parents uh, of the man showed up and took him home. <laughs> do we want to guess Do you think it was Anna's or do you think it was the Martini House? I was going to say, oh, 2007 <clears throat> would have been, been Martini House. Right. Yeah. Because. Martini House. Martini House. Martini house. At 11 in the morning? I hope it was Martini House, not Anna's. Yet yeah. it could have been more likely Anna's. Oh, that's then. Martini House was where Goose and Gander was. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. What are your favorite places to go out in San Leandro? Uh, for sure, mustards. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, um, we like Cook. We mm-hmm. I like Jude mm-hmm. at Cook. Oh, He's super God. nice to us. We always ask that question. Yeah. And uh, Megan and I always go to Market because cool. Megan's obsessed with the ribs there, so we always split the ribs and do like a glass of like. Kate or I'll do nice. Cole had smoking gun in there at the time and I always like supporting like our friends is mm-hmm. I think yep. that's really important for sure um, and then uh, 
for special occasions is press. You know, we're all lucky. Yeah, to you guys are the Abrams press. Are yeah. Deep into press. <laughs> David. <laughs> David. <laughs> David Avery was Have you been to Charlie's yet? Uh, not Charlie's, yeah. but Charter Oak is good. Mm-hmm. Cool. Everyone is like, Mateo always talks about their burgers. And oh. I, honestly, I liked it, but I wasn't like over. Head over he, heels. He, for it. he feels the yeah. same way, yeah. and I'm I, like, dude, this is not the best burger in the Valley. I crave Valley. the Charter Oak burger. So it's good. Oh, it's good. I love that for you. But thank you. Yeah. I love it for myself. It's, it's, I went the I other night, I'm and I like was bad. one of those no. nights where I just didn't want to hold back. Sure. So we ordered the bread, the stradicella, we the, all out. the burger, mm-hmm. the dessert, um, and the new broccoli salad. Very nice. Okay. Casey, I was curious about my order at Charter Oak the other night. <laughs> So, okay, okay. I have a report uh, of a screaming child near Grayson Avenue. Police found it was a juvenile screaming at a video game. Fair enough. Is where the high school is. I can think back to. Was that 2023? <laughs> that yes. Was recently. Yeah. It wasn't you guys? A caller <laughs> on Grayson asked if roosters. I, I I highlighted this one because this is an educational process for me. <laughs> A car on Grayson Avenue asked if roosters were allowed within city limits. They are not. The caller was referred to code enforcement, which I did not know that roosters were not allowed. I mean, I I get it, but I don't get it. Is this where you tell us you've got some roosters? Yeah, in well, the I just know we had roosters in St. Uh, Madro- we have roosters yeah. on Madrona Ranch, mm-hmm. and that's, that's the county. city right? limits. Oh, is Where's the county? We county just learned around, but... it's city limits. Oh, wow. It goes all the way, like, past the barns. And But then you're good after you get... Yeah, up, and up the up roosters past, are yeah. below oh, the barns. God, Uh-oh. you guys are... Don't, but I don't think know, anybody calls. This no, is Grayson no, the, Avenue. The this police isn't. listen to this yeah. podcast now because <laughs> their okay. chief was on it last well, night. They can <laughs> come up there and get the roosters. Yeah. Get it. <laughs> Com- co- compensate the roosters or compensate them. <laughs> and you guys just had some goats born. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, so, Find Ricky Carmichael's and <laughs> Joe Rogan's. <laughs> Wait, they're named or they're you named no, Joe I Rogan? No, they're. <laughs> He, is, the he is a goat. <laughs> <laughs> Baby goats are like dogs. I love them. Of course. Chivas. Of course. Chivas. Chivas. They taste really good. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm over here thinking I want one as a cute pet. <laughs> you guys are talking about We tacos. have all sorts of animals on the ranch. Oh, my gosh. Is- so do you, when you do eventually come back here, like, what are you looking forward to the most? Like, what's your, what's um, your goal? I, I feel like it, I've... I so growing up I didn't st- I grew up around farming right because my family my father in the vineyard management business and then um, you know the wine industry and us always being lucky to try amazing wines going yep. to dinner with David Abreu and Brad Grimes and yeah, can't you know it. all of us as family my dad is super uh, about like people trying good wines that he's associated with right and we do all these family events and parties and you know they everybody talks about him all the time and and that's like what he's excites me him is that experience yep. of you know the time spent with David Abreu and the Abreu family and so i really understood that as as i've gotten older here and and then i've put a lot of thought into finding my place here because i didn't go to college to study viticulture and or winemaking and um, you know, so there for a period of my racing career, I, I didn't feel left out, but I just felt like, what am I going to do? Like if racing doesn't work out or if something happens and I can't keep racing, um, you know, where's my place if I go back home? And, um, I, I, I honestly think like with what I've learned through marketing and racing and business is that I want to tell the story. Mm-hmm. Like I just want to tell mm-hmm. people and, that's honestly what sells wine is the story at the end of the day and the the childhood memories and the growing up on the, each property and the connection to our from our family to each label and Brad Grimes is history with my father and um, you know just the history with you know just our f- close friends and how connected we all are and how connected everybody is to the wine industry and I think that's what sells the wine and not a lot of people have that ability to go tell the story right some people can make great wine some people can farm like my father can is not going to go out and sell the wine i mean he, you know and he's is he going to pay somebody to 
go tell the story that doesn't know the story and Mateo doesn't have time to go mm. tell the story and make sure farming is perfect and the Avery way and you know one day David Avery's not going to be here and this thing's going to be what do you do right so I think it's important that you start to structure those things internally and I have a great relationship with Mateo and Lucia Lucia is you know trying other things in life and she's young which is fine I think that's that's amazing right we all and that we're even able to go do those things and then Mm -hmm. look at what's going on here and you appreciate it some people don't even appreciate what the Napa Valley presents people Mm -hmm. yeah it sometimes takes you to get away and then look back and you're like wow yeah it's pretty sweet special (laughs) yeah what about growing up in Rutherford it was, uh, I used to tell everybody I'm from Rutherford yeah. and I wasn't even born there, yeah. but I, I still tell people like I was, I was, eventually I moved to St. Helena. So, but I feel like all my childhood memories are Rutherford yeah. and I heard a very good river river and story. And um, some crazy. You guys times. were taking four wheelers and ATVs and so motorcycles. St. Supri. All the, everywhere. everywhere. We went all the way to James Ragucci's in Napa. There you go. All the way to Calistoga. <laughs> And like now, you'd probably put be put in prison if you did something <laughs> like that. <laughs> we got a good yeah. The, the Cole Valentine episode talks a lot about your adventure between. Did he come on? Did Cole come on? Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, lots of memories with Cole. That's awesome. Yeah, Cole's Cole's awesome. I I actually like. I ask Cole lots of questions because mm-hmm. I feel like we're not at the same level in the wine industry, but like same vision of like mm-hmm. family. Yeah you know, growing up around family that is involved in the wine industry and, um, you know, and, like, I ask him all these questions of, like, what happens here or what happens here? And I just don't want to, like, come back here and say, like, oh, yeah, I'm doing this. You know, I feel like Mm -hmm. we're ego-driven or I'm far from that. I think just, yeah, it's, we've had great memories growing up Mm -hmm. around here and, it was pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we could go do it all over again. <laughs> and I feel like with you boys, I was more of like a spectator. Really like I was not us. out there, you know, roughhousing by any <laughs> means. <laughs> Flying but, off four wheelers, crashing. You know, I was more of the observer. I participated in a few airsoft wars. That's how oh, I lost my front tooth. But <laughs> I remember I got shot right in the freaking fingernail and I quit. I was done. <laughs> it hurt so bad. And I was done. I was freaking done. <laughs> But I mean, I have memories of the, the like bunk beds at my mom's house and the little like basketball hoop in the pool yeah, that would go for hours. I remember hours. when the pool got put in. The first thing I thought, I came back there. I was like, I'm jumping off the roof into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> and it, that was like their number one rule: nobody jump off the roof. <laughs> I think they put that rule in there for you. Yeah. <laughs> like Rico will try. This. It was the first thing we. My mom put a pool in her backyard, and I was like, this is the first thing we're gonna do: is jump off the roof into the pool. <laughs> You've been, a, I mean, you have been a uh, evil Knievel, dare, daredevil for your entire life. Like, where did that start? Uh, I, I feel from my Uncle Jimmy, because <laughs> he's a wild man, and he's my dad's guy. craziness. Yeah, yep. the big radio guy. Uh, and, like, my, I think my parents just never really holding us back on yeah. being ourselves. I don't know, really, properly. Yeah. Like, and well, when you had the... I don't want to say freedom because, like, we all had, like, good we, parents that disciplined us. But, yeah. like, the opportunity here. We, yeah. Like, we had the land to just run around on. And and we were we were really lucky to be raised well. Like, away from, you know, never issues with drugs. And, yeah, we would sneak a few beers at harvest parties, which is hopefully every kid tries. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, you know, and, and you just appreciated those times. and. Yeah. And if it got too aggressive with that, then, you know, I had parents that really the pulled back. shut and, down. Yeah. yeah. Man. Get spanked and, <laughs> and whiffed. And, <laughs> but you never, you wouldn't learn if you didn't. So I <laughs> feel like you've had to learn your boundaries. Going back to Rutherford, I yep. mean, I, I just, you think about those memories in the river and stuff and like my father raising us around that mm-hmm. lifestyle of like every weekend, like going down to the river and not sitting on the couch watching TV or video games and, you know, and spending those times with our friends and Mm. dressing up in army gear and Mm -hmm. Indians (laughs) and, like, fake airsoft, you you know, airsoft guns with no BBs. I know. I was just watching some 
like full on face paint. And like my and dad stuff. would document it all with his <laughs> cameras <laughs> and like I would do it. Was, see, I was on the west side. I never ran into you guys. We were <laughs> up on Mount St. John. All we, the time. So we would run into like the Lejas. Yeah. And my dad would always tell us about his the history with him and like mm. uh uh the Leha Carlos Carlos is Le- Lejas. I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Dad, mm-hmm. Rudy, mm-hmm. it's yeah. like him and my dad went to school together, and then the Lejas were like down in the river area yeah. on their four wheelers and stuff, and it was yeah, it was cool. So let's hear about the daredeviling continuing today. Is it like I don't know, close your ears, uh, David, but uh, and Christy, but is it dangerous? Like, what do you what do, how do you mitigate? Dangerous, yeah. How do you mitigate the risk there? Uh, I don't think about it. I think about the reward mm-hmm. for. <laughs> Yep. You know I mean, and running well, and I know the consequence and the risk. Uh, but as I've grown as a race car driver and matured and understood and been educated mm-hmm. through um, experiences, you learn to appreciate what you're doing out on yep. the racetrack, and you know you don't use your vehicle as a weapon. And um, you know, so I've I've been I've really studied on how to be calm on mm-hmm. the racetrack as a race car driver and. Uh, I take my aggressiveness out in the gym and staying healthy and mm-hmm. focus on that. And, nice. uh, yeah, I mean, I just have learned to appreciate, you know, what I'm doing out on the yeah. racetrack and know that there is a risk. So when you like get yourself psyched up to go race, like, is there anything you do? Specifically? I just get anxious. I don't, so I like, walking, I don't like pacing. What do you do? Like, listen to music. Yeah. Uh, I get in my car early, uh-huh. so I'll get into it like. We have an eight-minute horn before our race, every yeah. race, so they'll blow the eight-minute horn. Well, I'll get in, like, five minutes before the eight-minute horn, mm. knowing that they're going to... And then I feel like that's where my peace is. Like, Because yeah. if, you, if you ever come and experience a race, you'll... Like, the fans are, are allowed to come into the, like, where my car is. They call right. it the pit area. Mm-hmm. And it's behind the grandstands or on the other side of the racetrack. So the fans have access to, like, they could come right into my trailer or my space. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we never want to run anybody away but which is access sprint car racing allows mm-hmm. i feel like when i'm in my car is when my, i have my peace like yeah. my time Easy. by myself mm-hmm. and just process like what's gonna you know i just run scenarios through my yeah. head while i'm out there you know not why i'm racing but understanding who you're racing against mm-hmm. and like positioning and not pushing it when you don't need to push it and if you're in position to push then you can push mm-hmm. I just know if you finish the race without crashing, it makes it a lot easier to get into the next one. <laughs> yeah, and it yeah, took right. me about 10 years to figure that out. How many out. times have you crashed, Rico? Uh, this, this, this season, mm-hmm. I, I went a whole year without um, having, like, I had, like, two DNFs where I didn't finish the mm-hmm. races. Just because you banged bang something up? or was it? Yeah, like, like I we had, like, two mechanical failures. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't really have many issues. I really put a lot of focus into that, and like, but over the years, like probably two or three, like where you're like, oh man, that hurt. Like, yeah. Where, Did like, you ever like? I really had really a get scared about it. One? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I crashed really bad at Eldora. It's like our oh. big track that we go to. It's kind of like a little bit bigger in Calistoga, mm-hmm. and I uh, from like impact like whiplash. Yeah. I got like a like my eye socket. Did like, you get? Like I got vertigo really yeah, bad. Yeah, the nystagmus really bad. For like really six bad. months, Jeez. and I was laid down. You showed me that in a yeah, social event. and my because <clears throat> I was switching like dude, right. both of them would rattle back and forth, yeah. and like it it scared me pretty bad because wow. like I learned from vertigo like it could possibly never go away. Yeah, that and time. I did like the epilepsy treatment mm-hmm. and uh, made sure to like drink lots of water, and I just tried to like zone in on my health for. Mm-hmm. Six months and it Big finally up, I just woke up one day and it was gone. Wow! Yeah, it's and pretty like, crazy. <clears throat> and I mean the theory, fun but I talked to everyone about vertigo yeah. and like mm-hmm. people get it like they'll bend over to tie their shoe and then yeah. they end up with. Yeah, I mean it, I see it probably mm, like once every other week. Like it's, it's not it's, fun. It's, it's fairly common and it's it's caused by different things. But like in theory, it's the crystal, the mini crystals mm-hmm. in your ear, inner yeah. ear get all out of whack, right? So it's like, like you said, that epley maneuver, like whipping them back into place. But sometimes that makes you feel worse before you feel better. And mm-hmm. yeah, I, it's it, interesting. And I always tell people like, I mean, to refer you to physical therapy and they're like, physical therapy yeah. for vertigo. I'm like, well, they're going to do all these mechanisms, like vestibular yeah. things that fix it. I, uh, yeah, so it freaked me out. Because I was hmm. like, man, if I never, really, I can't race like if I'm yeah. like this. Yeah, it's crazy. I would lay down to like go to bed and I'd have like the drunk spins. Spinning. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. throw up. Yeah, like just... randomly. Yeah, it was no fun. I'm glad you're better. 
Yeah, no, that, was, <laughs> that was six months though. Like I was wow. three months. I took the last three months of racing off, and then Dang. I went all the way to like February, March the following year. Wow. And then I, but I just woke up one day and it was gone. Like it was like, oh, I don't have it anymore. I knew right away. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. My eyes were all bloodshot. Like I remember. I don't remember where we were, but I so remember I, you. So our, I had a. Uh, like a barrel roll mm -hmm. crashed because our old cars are open wheel. Yep. And then it went into like a, a front spike where I like jolted really far mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. So we wear a uh, tether, like uh, they're called, it's called like a Hans device. Mm -hmm. And it's a tether that straps to your seat belts yep. and to your chest. And the tethers come up and clip to your helmet. So it only allows yep. you to move your head uh, like probably half an inch, like to the left and right mm -hmm. and forward. So it stops you from, I guess, mm -hmm. whiplash yeah. or mm -hmm. overextending, yeah. hyperextending. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I had, like, a blunt stop. Yeah. And I don't know if, like, my – I sit so close to the steering wheel, so my helmet hit the steering wheel, and that's what created the impact on, yeah, like, the eye right. socket. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, like, it wasn't like my eye was split open or anything. And – There's your inner ear that got – And then it, like, yeah, yeah, it created – I was super sick for, like – a few months. Well. Um, and then as far as like the the cars, like how many sprint cars do you have? Like if you roll one up. We you, take two to every race. Yeah. Two ra race ready cars. Huh. So like our trailer has like a gooseneck mm -hmm. that goes over like the top of the truck. And that's yeah. where like our spare car goes. And then we have sure. spare parts for like three crashes if we're away from home. <sighs> nice. Yeah. And from like a front end suspension yeah. to rear end. Our cars are direct drive, so it's just like a drive line that goes right between front, your front feet. wheel or rear wheel. Rear wheel. Rear wheel. Yeah. Cool. And then the engine sits right in front of you. Got it. And then I was going to ask if you um, like, what are some of the typical mechanical issues you might see on the race? Like, what, what mechanical first? failures would yeah. be like a flat tire uh -huh. or an engine failure? Yep. From pushing the engine too like, much to the limits. And, um, or like a, a physical contact crash in yeah. front of you that like knocks you out of the race. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can, they have like a two minute work area where like if you do crash, you have two minutes to fix it. Yep. And if not, you're out. Yeah. If not, yeah. they restart the race without you. Wow. So my team, they prepare pretty well. Yeah. We put all our spare parts. We have these, uh, big mules mm -hmm. like with toolboxes on the back and they like mounts to mount all the parts nice. on them. How quick can they change a tire? Uh, change a tire probably like 35, 40 seconds. That's insane. Yeah. Incredible. It goes quick. Yeah. We're one lug nut though, so it's a little bit faster okay. than like a car <laughs> on the side of the road. No way. I don't know why, and but I picture single, like like three pump jack. The, the <laughs> pigs are wearing yeah. like fancy fanny packs with all their tools in it. I'm I know sure. that's yeah, really aprons. Cool. Some I of just, them wear aprons. You know, I just picture a little accessory yeah. belt. We have like this mule, like it's like a ATV with a big toolbox on it. Nice. Which I'm surprised people don't use them around here. Like, on it'd be great. It'd be a great itself. ranch uh, uh, maintenance vehicle. Yeah. yeah, it holds the jack. Yeah. And, the and then how much tuning are these? Like, uh, when you go out Lots and you're doing trials, like you yeah. do a lot of like tweaking and adjusting. And what do you, what are the parameters you're adjusting? Like in the engine, in the suspension. Like what are you messing with? You mess with the suspension a lot. Yeah. The engine not so much. And then um, we have these wings on top that mm -hmm. create downforce, so you can. Uh, um, adjust uh the dimension of the wing like up and down or back and forth which which changes like center pressure of right. your car to that affects the balance of your race car mm -hmm. and at the end of the day we're fighting for like max amount of grip because we're racing on dirt tracks and when the track dries out you lose grip mm -hmm. and then you fill these 30 gallon fuel tanks up on the back of the car and when the fuel tank we run on methanol so it's a little bit cooler than uh, fuel than gasoline and mm -hmm. burns a little bit hotter but uh, when the fuel burns off it's about 6 pounds a gallon too for mm -hmm. 30 gallons so we have 30 lap races and we burn about a gallon a lap wow yeah when we're racing and what, what kind of engine is this? Oh. it's a, a aluminum yeah. it's a small block Chevrolet okay. engine fuel injected though yeah. so it's it like squirts fuel like direct Go. to the piston how many horsepower in each? it's like 800 horsepower <laughs> what? <laughs> And Do so they they're wet the track extremely. So they'll wow. put, they'll miss the track to like bring it back to life. But as you the race event develops, the track essentially dries out. Mm -hmm. So that's where you adjust your setup on your race car yeah. to 
uh, maximize like the grip level, and you only can do so much. But you can't you do know? that mid race. You have to. You just cannot pick do it mid race. Yeah, yeah. So once the green flag drops, like yeah. you're that you're out there for. I think you no need adjustment. a little sprinkler system in front of your car. So yeah, it's to like create the grip. Yeah, as you're driving, <laughs> it's like sprinkling in front. Perfect idea. Yeah. Great idea, Larry. Thank you. Tire prep. And why, why didn't Rigo think of that before? I know that would be. Just add a little water. It'd be a little bit slick. <laughs> Can you tell the nuance of that vehicle? Are you really in tune with it? So if something's like a little off, yeah, or like you can know right off, away. Like you're you can tell right away. How and fast? We're, and, we're like quarter inch, eighth inch adjustments. Like yeah. it's that crazy. Wow. Yeah. That's very cool. Like, and how fast are you going? Uh, we go like we probably average like a, a ninety to hundred miles an hour on a track. Yeah. Dude, insane. Top speed is probably like 120, 130. Yeah. Wow. What does that feel like? It's lots of G force. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like feels like someone's like pushing down on top of you. Yeah. To like, sh- and it's when your car is really good, it feels cool. Like it's yes. like a cool it's sensation. Like a hug. Yeah. And <laughs> push. I, I like that. <laughs> it's like a hug. Great. It's like a hug. It's it's like a, hug. a hug and sprinklers. That's <laughs> a nice hug. It's a great uh, episode title. Here. <laughs> but yeah, I just have I have an amazing team that helps me. Like they believe they physically believe in me. I can tell. I know. So, like, it makes everything work really right. smooth. I think that's really hard in our industry is to find people that, like, are smart and mm-hmm. work hard and passionate. Um, and how did you find this? Passionate. Your it's just taken a while. Yeah, yeah, built it, like, for the last right. eight years. To you got Trevor in him. He, Trevor's, he like, so Trevor works on my our friend's car. Okay. But he comes with me, hangs out oh, with nice. me all the time. Nice. He's, like, my best friend. But he's in, been in racing his whole life. He used to race. Cool. And Trevor's car that he helps, uh, he helps Kyle Larson, which is a former mm-hmm. Na- or NASCAR racer, sprint yep. car racer. And, uh, but they go to a lot of the same races. So we always park mm-hmm. next to each other and we're all, we always, like, we're like literally a traveling circus. <laughs> <laughs> like we load in, unload all our shit, load back up after the event, drive down the road. We're all at the car wash, you know, the, it'd be like coming to St. Helena car wash here at two in the morning. <laughs> Washing all the mud off your stuff. <laughs> You're a bunch of gypsies. Yeah, that's literally <laughs> what it is. Dude, I love it. A bunch that. of carnies. <laughs> but, like, Do nicer. they have as good as snacks on the races? <laughs> uh, they, like, they, certain tracks have nice snacks. Yeah, so that's, what's, that's another business venture. I'm just throwing it out there. What would you do, Hillary's hot dogs? Hillary's corn dip dogs? Dip and dots. Uh, dip and dots. You could rate each place based off their snacks and food Yeah, we do a lot. And like Megan make does. it, you know, well, like let the public know like, oh my gosh, this place, you have to get this snack. El what is, Dor- yeah, what is race? Eldora like? Speedway yeah. has, they call it a pizza burger. Okay. And it's a cheeseburger with cheese inside the patty. With like pepperoni and stuff? Yeah, they put like a, uh, no, 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 no. Oh. They put like, they, they mold the cheese inside the patty. Yeah. That sounds magical. And it's like a bur- it's like a two dollar cheeseburger. Wow! And they sell beers for two bucks, like what a Bush Light's two bucks. Good night. Yeah. What What wild. is the race life like when you're there? Just it like can, a couple days, and you're yeah. So we're single events, mm-hmm. so we lots of traveling. But sometimes yeah. we're at like three two day events at the same cool. venue, and we just get a hotel and usually just leave our race hauler at the track, and mm. we'll leave the vending trailer there on the grandstand side. And um, we get the races get over anywhere from like ten o'clock to midnight, nice. and we get there at like noon because the fans are camping, so they've opened the venue up for mm-hmm. people to start coming in. And it's uh when we go to like a regular race, like a Friday night random race, it we're there at uh, we leave probably anywhere from like seven to t- ten o'clock in the morning. Nice. And try to get to the venue if it's within like a couple hours. Try to get there anywhere from like ten to eleven. Yeah, ten to twelve, and that's when we park and the venue up, trailer, yeah. and then the team will come at like two or three o'clock. Nice, damn. And then the racing starts at like six. So you're like race after race, day after day. Uh, yeah. Sometimes. So we'll go yeah. three to four times a week. City. Racing. Jeez. Wow. That's intense. What is your top seller out of the venue? T-shirts. T-shirts. Yeah, the race fans love with it. Gus or with you. Right. Bright t-shirts. They like, we call it like our yeah. Rico, it's a we were 24 on it version. Yeah. So Is it's it? my character. So Megan had like a cartoon character of me and Gus made. Nice. And uh, yeah, it's with that with the race car and cool. people like that. What? And I think they like it because they feel connected. Yeah. And mm-hmm. 
it's something a lot different. Like, people don't put themselves on T-shirts. I mean, like, they're literally physical body. Yeah. <laughs> so it's <laughs> it's a cool, like, storyteller nice. and yeah. for people. And also Gus. And then the race car, uh, the Midwestern states, like, they love bright colors, yeah. bright racing shirts. Like, fluorescent, you know, the construction yellow stuff. And they like the the really busy, rate like, graphic-designed yeah. car front and back and that's kind of the style of racing is mm-hmm. sweet busy and it's that's so what the fans interesting like. too that you've learned the different marketing between like here where we live compared yeah, to like your super target simple audience here yeah mm-hmm. simple and, and like black and white yeah I feel like. they're like yeah. defined like mm-hmm. sim- like don't want to think about what to wear today mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they just want to grab it and put it on and yeah. not like yeah. busy anything busy anything mm-hmm. busy is a turn off around this mm-hmm. industry mm-hmm. Cool. Which the racing industry is like the busier, the more they're buying. <laughs> I love it. Well, then we want to close this out with a good vlog. Yeah. Wow, we're already almost done. We're one hour. You've had so much fun. <laughs> See, I told this is a great way to spend a Monday night. Well, I have one, but I think it's only the time that makes this a little fun. Yeah. 9 a.m. Report of a man walking along southbound the shoulder of Highway 29 north of Deer Park Road. Police found the man outside the city limits sleeping on the ground with a bottle of alcohol. The sheriff's office will handle the situation. (laughs) Perfect. Here's a fun, creepy one. Um, This was July 14th, Thursday, 9.32 in the morning. A Hillview resident returned home on Wednesday afternoon to find that her shower was running and someone had used her toilet. Nothing appeared to be missing or damaged. An officer responded and told the woman to call the police if any other suspicious activity occurs. So do you think that uh-huh. with the way water prices are right now... Is that a crime? It's absolutely... That's what I mean. You could rack up a multi-thousand dollar water <laughs> so bill. So two-hour showers in the morning aren't... Yeah. Is it over $900? Hey, hey so I want to tell you guys something. <laughs> I've been gone all summer... Talk about water bills. I've been gone <laughs> all summer. And, not, and I pay yeah. the water bill here. And it didn't change much. And I have no sprinklers or irrigation or nothing. It's it's wild. Like, I literally went in this house. Yeah. This house was quiet. Nobody was here. And it still is expensive. And because you paid so was, much for the sewer and the hookup. It was like and 300 freaking dollars. Yeah. And, and I wasn't even anything. home. Yeah. And it's, I don't even have any irrigation. Yeah. So, so imagine I, if you did. Nobody's, imagine if you had like a lawn so upgrade. I, it bumps to like... For it's, I think it's every two months too. So yeah. we're talking about two months sequences. But, but still, I mean, pleasant. I think poor more residents would be upset that they left the water running than someone broke into their house. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would be kind oh, of scared yeah. if someone broke into my house. I'd probably just think it was Richard or someone that came by and forgot. But <laughs> oh my god, what's that? You got one about fireworks? I got fireworks. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> I got a it's July fourth. What's this? Twenty one? Is that nine? nine you said nine nine fifty five? Mm-hmm. So ten o'clock, ten almost ten o'clock at night. Report of illegal fireworks on Vineyard <laughs> Avenue area not associated with Crane Park now. <laughs> so <laughs> I can take testing here. I was not here on the fourth of July. <laughs> I don't know if Mateo was. I've never seen a neighbor fly fireworks off. So yeah, we. Um, you know, normally we ask if you've ever made the police log, but now it's no, now we, it's we, asking if you, <laughs> if you're not in it. <laughs> I love it. But the fireworks is uh, we really understood how dangerous they could be in our valley. Oh yes. No, for sure. So you for have sure. to yep. really respect yep. what you're doing when you're lighting. It's not like the old days up. in Rutherford where you can get away with it. Yeah. So, yep. That's Quite true. a bit different. <laughs> yeah. Very true. And I'm lucky we have that respect now and not <laughs> yeah. just be a free for all with fireworks shows. I love it. Cool. Well, closing it out, do you have, would you have any yeah. like advice to, I don't know, like a new racer or like a new, I don't know, between racing or vineyards, man? Like, what, what advice would you give someone who's getting into it? That's um, a kind of broad question, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> no, you're fine. I think racing, yep. you look at it as a passion, mm-hmm. you know, and a if it's going to be a long-term project and, and you look at it a lot similar to Vineyard if you're on the management side or the viticulture side or the winemaking side is like pa- being super patient with people mm-hmm. and work ethic and, um, 
you know, understanding that if it is your true passion, that there is a place for you in the industry, each of those industries. And no matter if it's on like the, if you're a mechanic or a winemaker or assistant winemaker or, um, you know, working in a vineyard to understand the growth and development of a grapevine and to just understand that your place is you just you deserve it and your place is there and as long as you work for it i mean it's a uh, yeah it's it's two very very special entities mm-hmm. that um you know we all have a lot of passion for and okay. it's cool that it brings us together which is fun to talk about no i dig it it's a <laughs> confluence of two worlds which thank you again for bringing us into yeah. your world a little bit and explaining what racing is like because i had no idea how that world worked, and I feel like I have a little bit of an insight to it. So, and I'm going to get to a race at some point. Yeah, so, okay. we're, uh, we're coming. When's, in the where, fall. Where, oh, you're going. Wait, one more thing. You're going to Australia. I'm to going race. to Australia. Let's hear about the Australia trip real quick. I'm going to Australia for 30 days to mm-hmm. race, um, and it's 12 races in 30 days. Nice. And I'm bringing two really close friends with okay. me to. So we're going to make it kind of a vacation, uh, cool. which is going to be extremely tough for me to be away from Megan and Gus for the longest mm-hmm. period of my 10-year relationship with her and <laughs> my three-year relationship with Gus. But it'll be fine. We'll thankful for FaceTime. Nice. Do you lots of send the car? Yeah, we sent yeah. it in August. No way. And it just showed up like last week. Wow. Uh, that was my question. How do you get the car there? Yeah, it went on a boat in a well, container. Yeah. And I sent a car and a couple spare parts and then... A family in yeah. Australia is uh, allowing us to utilize like their truck and trailer, cool. and they're going to sponsor us a little bit, like nice. help us with tires. And the dollar, the Australian dollar is, uh, it's like sixty five cents to our. So sixty five cents American is yeah. a dollar well, Australian. Your money goes a little further. Yeah, a little cool. bit further. So nice. Cool. That'll be awesome. We'll be. Um, definitely following along. And where can we find you for social, social media? media? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm like super interactive on there instagram facebook and twitter twitter i more use like for informational purpose and then instagram's like more lifestyle and facebook is like merchandise Mm -hmm. and cool videos and it's crazy to understand the demographics of like each social platform and Mm -hmm. as they've grown the last decade for me and my older fans are facebook mm-hmm. and my younger fans are like instagram and, yep. which is obviously the cooler platform for people but i don't sell merchandise really mm-hmm. not good that well on instagram. instagram like people don't buy that they all buy on facebook like my number one yeah. revenue see and i would have thought it's the opposite yeah oh, number one revenue guessing. is facebook and wow. then twitter is yeah twitter's just twitter yeah it's Very it's cool. cool i like following people on twitter nice Super so opinionated. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. God. So funny. Oh, you also get Nextdoor. Don't forget about Nextdoor. Yeah. Nextdoor was my entertainment all day Sunday. Oh, it's Lord, amazing Lord. when I don't yeah, have I, to work uh, on a Sunday uh, and I can just dive on Jen in. just said that, I guess, someone forgot to latch the gate at my dad's house and all the dogs got out. <laughs> and then Lucia, like, made a comment to my dad about him being on, the dogs being on Nextdoor. And my dad's, like, freaking out, like, mad. <laughs> He's like, what? You don't even know what Nextdoor is and you're mad. <laughs> Yeah, we love our neighbors. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I love the entertainment my neighbors yeah. provide me. Oh my god, 100%. For free. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 100%. <laughs> Thank you guys, though. For, yeah. awesome. This was fun. Cheers. Yeah, yeah cheers. cheers. This was really cheers. cool. Yay. Hillary, what did you think about this episode? I thought it lived up to all my expectations. I agree. I went into it thinking we were going to have a wonderful time with a wonderful person, hear wonderful stories, learn a lot, and drink great wine. And I was not disappointed in any aspect of that. Rico delivered on all fronts. Yeah. As he does in racing and wine and friendships. I completely agree. Thanks to Rico. Thanks to you guys for listening. And, and happy Valentine's Day. Happy VD. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>